Hi everybody, I am going to go over a heap exploit today, kind of the uh, first one. I've found that heap exploits get complicated really quickly, and so I just wanted to put together kind of a first step um, baby heap exercise for um, people that are trying to learn how to do this. And of the heap exploits, this pattern is the the unlink pattern, and we'll, we'll get into that here in a second with the code. Okay, so the challenge code. And for this challenge, it's pretty straightforward, but uh, what we have is we have a structure with um, an FD, so it's a po pointer to itself and a back pointer to itself. And then we've got the a shell, so we're not going to have to do any kind of fancy tricks or ROP or anything to get the exploit to work. And then this is the unlink function. This is where all the magic will happen, where we're going to be able to create a, an exploit uh, that will run and basically get the shell to run. So in main, does a malloc, and then we have these three objects that are malloc to the heap or allocated to the heap, and then a is pointing forward to B. B is pointing backwards to A, so they're pointing at each other. B is pointing forward to C, and C is pointing back to it. So B and C are pointing back towards each other. There are two links on each of the records, the forward and the backward, which is why this is a doubly linked list. And we'll notice here the heap overflow. It just lets us know right off the bat. Also, the stack address and the heap address, so we don't have to do any worry about any kind of information leaking or anything like that with the exploit. And then we can get as much data as we want to overwrite. And then the unlink runs, and we unlink the middle one, the B one in this case. Now, what we're going to look at first is just kind of a quick, quick, super fast refresher on doubly linked lists, and then going to go through how the unlink works when we have um, good data. So a doubly linked list has two links in it. And looking at this record down here, this is the forward. Our addresses are going up, so it's as if this is on the bottom, this is the second, this is the third, but laid out more visually um, to make it a little bit easier to follow what's going on. So the first one is pointing towards the middle one, towards B, and then it's pointing back. So these two are pointing to each other, and then you can see that B and C are pointing towards each other. Now these numbers in here, these are shortened memory addresses that are from my execution of it, so that it kind of everything tracks through the entire process. And you can see that 10 is pointing to 10, 28 is pointing to 28, 40 is pointing to 40, et cetera. Okay, so the unlink code. Basically, this first part of the code is setting up the temporary variables that hold the values while, because it's basically doing a swap operation. What's going to happen is we're going to remove the link that's pointing backwards to the middle one and remove the link pointing forwards, which effectively deletes this, although it doesn't. It's still in memory. We're just now going to route around it. So. Uh, the temporary variables are going to be on the stack, and we can, looking at the stack, I even included um, the locals from main. So these are the addresses 10, 40, and 28, 40, 28, and 10. And then um, they're in a different order just because that was actually how um, it compiled. When it compiled, that was the order that it put them in. It doesn't always necessarily follow variable declaration order. Now, saved EIP for the link unlink function and the EBP for the linked function. And then these are the two local variables, T forward and T backward, which are at minus four from EBP and minus eight from EBP. We'll see if I remember that in a few minutes. So we're at this last statement, and now moving forward, T forward to back. So T forward was is set of 
is 40, but the back, so the green one coming back, is what we're going to remove. And we're going to reroute this around over to node 1. So we can see now that the value in here is 10, and it reroutes around. Similarly, t backward to forward. So this is the t backward value, and we're going to change it from this to 40. So we get rid of it, and then it becomes 40, and then node 2 is kind of effectively gone, or, or really gone. So now, what happens if we use bad data or evil data, or how can we take advantage of this um, unlink process so that we can um, hijack the control flow? Well, everything else starts out the same. It's all initialized the same. But then during that gets, we write a bunch of A's. And then with all these A's after them, we write, hard to read with my bad handwriting, but my EBP, and then junk, and then shell, and then old EBP. So this would be where I want it to eventually point to, and this would be where it originally was. In our case, we're going to use 2C, which is pointing to here to junk, is where we want the new EBP to be, so that when the return is done, the shell will be executed. And then ABP90 is where, on my machine, when it's executing, where the um, EBP is located. OK, so with the local variables again, we're set to AB90. So AB90 is equal to back, or temporary backward, and 2C is equal to temporary forward. And they're in here on the stack. Now we just kind of let our, every, the other nodes don't really matter at this point. What we're worried about is what's going on in node 2. So just to get rid of the extra information, I dropped them off. So we've got 2C and AB90, and we're going to go to the next step. So for T forward, points to, or has a record with the back in it, so we've got, it's effectively a pointer, oops, using the t forward value plus 12. Why is it using 12? Well, it's using 12 because we have the back, <coughs> excuse me, the back is above this address, above this address, and here, so we have the offset from the beginning is basically 4, and then 8, and then 12, and then AB90 starts. Um, now, once we do 2C, oops, we do 2C plus 12 equals AB90, and 2C plus 12 is hex of 38. It's really confusing. I should have made these hex values instead of, oh wait, yeah, I should have made these hex values instead of decimal values. Sorry about that. This should just be a C. So it should be an OXC. And then 38. So we plop that guy right in right here. It really doesn't, for this one, it doesn't make us any difference. So here's where the magic happens. The T backward to forward, T forward. T backward to forward, since it's right, since forward is right here in the record, it's plus zero. So T backward plus zero, or AB90. AB90 equals 2C. So what we've effectively done here is we've changed the EBP to the value that we wanted it to be. So what happens? Okay. So. In the epilogue of unlink, we've got move EBP to ESP. We're taking whatever the value that was in EBP and we're moving it to ESP. And so we end up that they're both kind of pointing here to the same location. And which happens to also be our 2C that we want to use. So then when we do a pop EBP, it takes EBP and it moves it over to here, pointing at 2C. And ESP just continues on like nothing happened. Now, 
when we do a pop EIP, ESP is pointing towards return to main and that sends us back into main. And now with that, when we return back and everything else happens, we do this move EBP to ESP. So once again, we link, we line these two up and the stack has been effectively pivoted from where it was and over to here so that the we now control it it's now on on the heap and then with the next statement when we do pop ebp we don't know where ebp went it just kind of goes off wherever whatever junk points to we could send it could send it to anywhere it it doesn't matter and then we're going to do the next statement we do a pop eip and that's our shell value and starts running that function and we get shell and that's it okay so now let's oops i already had it running it's testing something all right so I am using Pwn Tools with its integration with GDB and Tmux, which gives me this split screen. So I've got my output that's going out to the top screen. And then the bottom screen has got all my GDB and GEF data and information. So we are in the unlink. That's where we've stopped. If we want to look at the data array, it's already been overwritten, but we can at least look at um, the linked list. So starting at the bottom, we've got the, we're at 28. So the value's 28 in there. If we look back at our uh, kind of what we're expecting that to be, we've got 28, which is not there, and then all our A's that go up to here, and then we've got 2C, and then junk, which is all ones in this case, our shell location, and then AB90, which is our where on the stack the EBP is pointing. Oops, or not. Oh, it will be. We're currently in the prologue, so we need to now 90 is EBP and it's pointing to this A8. So the first thing we're going to do is do the temporary variable stuff. So we're going to set up T backwards, which is EBP minus four. Um, EBP minus four is right here. Um, EBP is here minus four and then We'll do the same for EBP minus eight, which is the two C. So T forward is two C, T backward is the AB90. Now T forward, T forward plus 12 plus C is going to put the T backward value. So we're gonna end up with that a, B, 90 value at the 38. Now, if we look at the DREF, we've got the two A, B, 90s here now at 38. It doesn't really matter that in this case, for this challenge, we're not needing to do anything with that other than not mess anything up. So going through the T backward, now this is the part where we set the value and change. Right here, we're going to change uh, EBP. We're going to change this to our 2C value. Boom. So now it's 2C. So now after we do the epilogue of main, we should have control via the shell. So the leave is the 
move the EBP value to ESP and then pop EBP. So it does those two things at once. And we can see that we're now pointing at where we're going to return. And the EBP value is up here is pointing at 2C, which is perfect. And then we do a return, which is nothing more than a pop to EIP. So uh, EIP right here is going to become this new value with the AB. And it did. And you can see that we're pointing to here, we'll go through these couple of extra assembly statements, and we're on the epilogue of main. Now, this statement is going to move EBP to ESP. And pop EBP, which is going to have the result of taking the 2C and going from 2C to, to the next one, 4 above it, so we end up at 30. And then we're ready for the return, or the pop EAP, which gives us the shell. And as we can see, we are in the directory with the shell. Perfect. Thanks for listening.